you know, coming to part two of um, the catfish fingerlings production system. Remember my talk, the first segment, where I talked about materials we're preparing for a Congolese based in London who wants us to send the materials down to him in Congo. And I just felt I should share the materials with you for before he gets them. So what are the things that make up the, the materials that makes up the book? Let's talk about a few, a few of it. Now that doesn't preclude the fact that you have to subscribe to Mr. Fish channel that you're watching now www.youtube.com slash Mr. Fish World. That's number one. Two, we will expect you to make commentaries. Right? Either you don't like what we're doing or what we can do to improve or oh, an approval to show that you're happy with what we're doing. It's important to do that for us. And don't forget to press the like button. If you want me to like you too, that doesn't mean I'll hate you if you don't press the like button. <laughs> By the way, so let's get down to action. Now, one of the first things you do that I see people do when they, uh, and it's a mistake most people make or they overlook in the beginning, is to underrate the amount of space they need for fingerlings production units. Now, and the reason for that is because of the fact that they think it's a small cottage thing for the small timer. No! When you have a male fish and a female, of course, the male can take care of four females, by the way, and if your females are about one kg each, you can imagine getting almost close to 150 to 200,000 babies. Come on. Now, if you have that, what space do you think you need for that kind of thing? That's massive. Yeah, they go small size, fine. But just know one thing that a square meter space we need about two will, will just barely contain 2,000 fingerlings. So multiply by 200,000. So many vats do you need? So this is a very crucial one. So get down to make your vats. Very important. That's beyond the scope of this. You can watch our videos on the channel. Go to the playlist section and press fingerlings, fingerlings unit, fingerlings video. Then you see a lot of systems that we have built for people on fingerless production. So you can adopt any one you want. For that plastic, tarpaulin, a disused uh, plastic tank, concrete, just mention it, all sorts. So that's by the way. Now once you do that, the first thing is that's to nurse your fingerless. But let's talk about the aphrophization itself. That's getting the female ready and then fertilizing and then producing the babies. Now you basically need a vat or two or more. But let's look at the first one. Let's say you're just doing a small cottage issue. Now you have a single vat. The best one, of course, is one made by made woody, unless you want to go psychedelic and then you want the imported ones. But you can use wood as if you're building a coffin that you slice into half. I'm not saying you should go to the graveyard and start digging up people's coffin. I'm not there. <laughs> or try to make something like a coffin divided into two. Why? Well, because about the same size, three, uh, one meter by about one feet by about uh, ten inch. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the size of a plant that's about uh, four feet right up and right yeah so that's by the way so you have that table with tapolin and then you need to have this in there this one serves as your kakaban or we call it spawning mop i don't like to use uh, uh, too much of scientific terms now this is about the ideal one if you use the green one you're going to be in trouble because all the hashed eggs are going to go in the babies will go in and your hashes will go in too and you're going to have a mess on the ground. If you use the blue one, you are in for the same hassle. But if you use the white one, oh, that's safe because the unhashed eggs will not be able to go down. But I can tell you one thing, the hashed babies too will not be able to go through. So, you are still back to one. You remember we call it Gombe. <laughs> the new generation guys, so you've got to be careful. Apologies to those in Gombe State. Now, uh, so this is the ideal thing. Some call it aluminum stuff or thereabout. Now you place it right there. This is a big one that's going in for the guy. So you can span the length of the of the of the system if you want. Some try to sew uh one inch, uh sorry, one quarter inch pipe around it to make it float. Uh what you call this PVC pipe, and some just lay it on top, and you have this four inch, you know, cut slice into two, like an igloo, an Eskimo igloo, and then so that you have it right there like that not on the floor so that when the babies hatch they can wriggle through i hope that's clear now with that you think you're on the right track now by the way before you do anything at all i hope you know your water has to be okay and the first way to know that is to do your water test 
Now you can go water quality aspect of my video on the playlist. You will see how to test for water. Now this one is the most popular one using the liquid test kit because even unless you're color blind, once your water is between 6.5 or uh, 6.5 right to 7.6 or 8, you are okay, good to go. But many of you have your water showing this orange color. Then you gotta get down to Mr. Fish because at that time there's a proprietary product we have that's gonna save you lots of money. But if you want to go the prodigal journey first, you can go ahead and start buying tons and tons of soda hash. Right? Once you fill up your very tank, you dose it with soda hash to look scientific, right? It costs you yeah, it costs you money, by the way, mind you. And anytime you finish the water in your bio tank, you are still gonna dose and fill it up again, you dose another soda hash. I've seen some guys who spend three hundred thousand per month dosing on soda hash. That's that's criminal on your budget. So but once you contact us and we get you the media called the alkalizer system where we have pretreated seashells with propionic acid and other proprietary stuff to let them release slowly without allowing fungal to grow on them I won't tell you those proprietary stuff that's what makes Mr. Fish, Mr. Fish right? and then you now have the clean up to the light are you getting me? cold pressed together with chargers to make them last for two and a half years so that when you have exhausted the ion exchange capacity you can put them in the solution I'll tell you that when you've done your two and a half years and then in 24 hours, they're as good as brand new. So you don't ever need to buy another one. That's a deal, isn't it? So order for your alkalizer. Should your water show this reddish color? And by the way, if your water shows this blue one, which is very unusual, I hope you're not located around Dangote cement factories, a Wikoro, a Bajana, and all that stuff. This will be some water looks like this. Then you can use this calcium chloride stuff in yeah, a particular amount of dosage. But contact me to let you know what to do. Is that okay? That's water. Now, for those of you who want to do repeated water test again and again, then you can actually use this one. That's the digital. Now, the problem with digital is that you have to do what I call, uh, uh, what do you call it now? Should you want to call it? Calibration. Now, I said forget about this. I'll let you know our own local methodology of doing it using just water. Calibrate your stuff. If you are a professional type and you bought this, is that okay? Since you are not selling feeds, so this I think is ideal. So you can either use this or this. That's to get your water. Now with your water running, I think you are almost set to go. But by the way, if you want to really have what they call zero mortality, then this guy, this arrow, is what I think you need. That's another proprietary product from Mr. Fish. Now I got the taste of this at a world conference in Singapore on fisheries. And um, what was it all about? I got attracted to Singapore because they are a small country, the size of Baesa State, uh, Baesa State. You can drive around the country in about less than an hour and yet produce one third of the world's tropical fish. In fact, the airport has the, 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 the cargo item coming, the largest cargo item coming out from there. Are you getting me? The largest cargo item is tropical fish. That's definitely 72 terminals. So I just said, let me go there and see what's going on. I found that they use live water. So if you want your water, because you kill your water by allowing the borehole to shun it. Put your finger inside the borehole, you know, inside the borehole propeller, you know what I'm talking about. So the water comes out dead, it's true. We want to get your water back to natural spring water quality. Then this is what you need. We call it LED device. What does it do? The water pump is messed it up. We transmit it by electromagnetic signal by making it turn clockwise, you know? But then, with this, it returns back to the original state, just like the cytoplasm of your LD tissue. So, the animal you are dealing with, which is the fish, right, is going to enjoy it better immune system, I mean, that's almost zero for medication, better growth, more into his body. By the way, every animal in your kingdom should enjoy it, and I believe you are the number one animal in your kingdom. I believe my viewers are not plants. They are animals, isn't they? Are you an animal or not? I'm sure some of us who are pastors who say we're spiritual, spiritual animals, by, by the way. But I'm a scientist. I'm an animal. So all animals in your kingdom will benefit from this. Number one for humans is arthritis. I won't say beyond that. But I think I've run 
this segment enough i'm going to do a part three so stay tuned for that to talk about all the other components that make up the materials you need for fingerling production system before they get packaged for the to go to congo